I'm Sarah Smith and I am in 10th grade. I'm Xavier Yader and I'm in 9th grade. My name is Seth Walker and I am in 10th grade. My name is Brandon Galloway and I'm a senior. My name is Caleb Neely, I am a 9th grader. Uh, my name is Central Lavender and I am a sophomore. Uh, my name is Phil Carl and I'm the Vice President of the Warwood Tool Company. Yeah, so my name's Logan Hartle and I'm the President of the Warwood Tool Company. So we were approached, uh, or I was approached by Mrs. Dan Trassi um, with an information about this grant where we work with a local company uh, to basically design something for them to address a problem that they have at their business. Um, so fortunately, uh, I know the owners of Warwood Tool, which is a local company very well. Uh, we took a trip to their location, uh, toured their factory. They gave us a couple ideas for some problems that we could address and ultimately we landed on one and uh, kids kind of took off with it. And before the special presentation starts, I'd like to thank uh, Chevron Education Alliance and you guys, of course, for giving us this opportunity. All right, our, ob our objective was to come up with a design to pull the head off of a sledgehammer fell destroying the structural integrity of it. And we had to calculate the force and we were given a budget of $2,000. And we were able to tour Warward Tool Company and we looked at their machinery and how they made their products and it helped us understand how the hammers were made and how we would handle them when just figuring out how to take the head off. Yes, and uh, this field trip actually was, is a pretty unique experience to kind of give us an idea of the background of how the hammers are made and all this. It all gives you a different aspect when actually designing the project. Research. All right. Um, most of our research at first was actually individual work. Um, we first researched just equipment that could possibly help us or if this is possibly already an actual invention. but. Um, once we actually found out that there was nothing at all even close to this, we actually had to, instead of innovating, a, innovating something, we actually had to start inventing something, which was really unique. Um, like we researched the cost of it, and because we had to keep within the budget of $2,000, while also keeping in mind sharing it with the other class. So we researched how much it would cost, and then when we realized that we, it never existed, it's a brand new product, that's when we started researching, well, what do we have to use to build it? How would we do this? So that's what we researched. Yes, and cost has to play a very important role because things do get expensive, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Our brainstorming session. It was nice to see everybody else's ideas as goofy as they were or as good as uh, an idea as it could be. And it was nice putting all of our ideas together and sitting at a table and discussing it every day. A lot of talking with other people, seeing different ideas, understanding that my ideas might not have been as sensible as I thought, and how other people saw what I couldn't see out of my own project. What I learned is that it takes, it takes teamwork to get things done. It, takes you know a group understanding to work at a faster pace. I learned that there is no way you can do this by yourself. You need as much help as you can get from your coworkers and everyone you have contact with who is involved in the same project as you. All right, um, so once we had our individual research, we all came, sat down at a table and started to discuss our ideas. We first created a list of all of our potential ideas for every aspect of it to calculate the force, to pull off the head of the hammer, how we're going to hold this sledgehammer itself. And then once we had our ideas down, excuse me, once we had our ideas down, we then created a uh, decision matrix to help us come up on a consensus of our design and made sure everyone was on the same page and okay. And then once we came up with our consensus, we started looking at what actually won the decision matrix. And once that, we then started to focus on creating our design. And we picked the log splitter. But Every idea is a good idea. There is no such thing as a bad idea when designing something. 
And I think they learned, uh, again, the, the engineering process in general from design to making decisions on cost to making decisions on quality, uh, working with a team and, and, and what, what to do when there's, when there's discrepancies and, what, and, and different ideas um, because that's going to happen every day in business and every day in the real world. You're going to have an idea. Somebody else is going to have a different idea. And how you, how you resolve those conflicts to come up with the best idea uh, is invaluable. And the good thing about the decision matrix is, you know, if your idea was the mold and you're very passionate about it, it would keep you from being biased. So if I wanted to push my idea like I want it to be the mold, well, using the decision matrix, it showed that it was almost the least effective one. And so, and say, if I didn't like the wall idea, it's the most effective. You know, cost-wise, construction, materials, it just worked the best. And that's the good thing about the decision matrix. Right, and another thing is, on each and every single one, we all sat down and talked for a good solid five minutes, maybe on each one, even longer in some bigger concerns, because they all played a very important factor when deciding our actual design. And it was very, very crucial to actually help with each other. And it really created a good aspect of teamwork. And this is our, uh, Handle hold decision matrix as they continue the same thing. We all work together. Compression fit is the one that we went with because it had the highest total. Yeah, and it's actually scored by, I don't know if you guys can see it right here, it's very small, but four is the best, and then it, you know, you like, you think it's, you know, four the best for complexity or the functionality, and one is the worst. And there are ones and twos for yes and no's, but I think we don't know if we had any. I don't of those. think we used yes and no's. Yeah, but it, it's still there. Right, on the next one. Here's the pushing machine decision matrix. And with all of these, we still scored all of them and talked about all of our ideas that we all came up with. And we all sat down and talked again and again about all the possible problems and safety and cost. Very, very important. Construction time was another big concern if it was going to take several weeks to actually construct and then we'd be unfortunately out of time to present. Which was fun going through all the different designs and um, different styles of what we could use and drawing it out, especially for me. I'm a pretty good drawer, so drawing it was very, very fun. Yeah. Um, here are the sketches that we had. It first started off, uh, we all know that we had to push the head off the hammer. And so our first ideas were to just kind of have like arms to push them off. And we were gonna, before, this was kind of a sketch of the log splitter before we actually found one. And so this was before we actually found what would be pushing it. And then when we found our first log splitter, well, this, came, this sketch came before this one. Just, we thought, what if we put a wall between the hammer and the handle so that it could push it off. So that was the first sketch. Then it was this sketch. And then we found our first log splitter. Um, we thought that this existing structure right here, oh, whoops, gotta go back. Uh, let's see. Okay. okay, there we go. This existing structure right here didn't exist because we had to figure out how to put the grips on the handle and we couldn't attach it to the log splitter. So we built a structure over it which it would sit on and you could attach it to. Um, here's our, where our pressure gauge would go because the wall would push this way, pushing the head off the hammer, and it would measure the force it took to push it off. And we had our hydraulic system here, and the handles that you see coming out is how you would work it. Like, you would go like that, and it would push the head off the hammer. Okay. Um, just uh, with, with some of these early designs, like these two right here especially, we definitely ran into a lot of issues, of course, when you're designing something that's just something that is inevitable. And once we actually found a log splitter that we all liked and agreed on, we started to actually sketch up our own design. But there were some problems, of course, and we were also very, very scared to break our expensive pressure gauge. And, and then we'd be in a lot of trouble. So we eventually had to obviously move on to another design. But, but that, okay, am I good? Okay. Um, but, it's just part of designing something. You're obviously going to have to run into some issues, but. The reason why, this would have been our final sketch, but the reason why we changed our minds was because we didn't want to break the pressure gauge. So Mr. Harrell found us a log splitter that had a built-in one.
Yeah, it just or one that would be easier to add. Yeah, it's just a lot easier to actually implement and not have to worry about destroying it. So yeah. <laughs> This is a lot of we chose. My favorite part of the project was probably looking for what we came up with. I think that would be probably to see what the world had to offer. Yeah, once we uh, actually figured out which log splitter we wanted, and there was a lot of uh, concerns when actually picking a log splitter, believe it or not. Portability, how much it costs, safety, practicality, and with all things considered, we also had to try to figure out how to calculate the force and decide how we're actually going to hold down the sledgehammer itself. And it all played a very important factor into actually finding a log splitter this specific specific for what we actually need. Um, once we add the pressure gauge to our log splitter, though, this is the formula we are going to use to actually determine the force used. And with this formula, we're going to use the pressure on the pressure gauge in the area of the cylinder pushing the head of the hammer itself. And that's how we would actually determine the force used to take the head off the sledgehammer. Okay, <laughs> there you go. If we would have fit, uh, built our product, this is uh, what we would look for in it. So pushing the head off the hammer, did we have enough force to actually successfully do it? Or would, you know, the holding of the hammer would, while we push it, would it just simply slide out of the grips? Um, we didn't want the hammer breaking because that would be really bad. And we thought the, by the how slow the lock splitter would push the head off, we didn't think it would go flying, the head of the hammer. So catching probably, um, just you know, add plexiglass to catch it, so it would just not fall onto the floor or onto somebody's foot. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of safety concerns when actually coming up with this design, um, and just concerns all around. Mostly, you know, we we're very worried about actually holding down the handle itself because you know, if you you can break the grip and you can actually have wood splints go flying everywhere, it could just simply slip out, and then you're just it doesn't blow up the sledge of the, the head of the sledgehammer, excuse me. And then um, the sledgehammer, the head itself, with the amount of force we're trying to use to actually push the head off the sledgehammer we, was a big safety concern. I mean, we didn't expect it to go flying, but once you're designing something like this, you need to consider all aspects of anything that can actually go wrong is very important when coming up with a design like this. Okay, our final idea. Um, as of right now, this is our final idea to hopefully stay as very similar to it. Um, we plan to innovate the log splitter to secure the sledgehammer and to actually push the head of the hammer off the sledge, the handle of the sledgehammer. Um, we're just going to use the hydraulic system of the log splitter itself. And calculate the force once we include the force tester we use to put on our log splitter itself. And to create like a barrier of safety and make sure nothing goes flying off or anything like that. Um, with a log splitter we chose, we had a re-sketch and this is our final sketch of what it would look like. Um, what we would have to add is the pressure, pressure gauge right here. Oh, I keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Sorry. Okay, you're good. Um, we would, this right here is what would push the log, this little part right here. So what we would do, we would drill, kind of cut out a hole on the side for the hammer to sit, the head of it, and then another one coming out this way for the uh, handle to sit in. And so what would happen, the grips would go right here, attaching the handle down to the machine. And then we would, the machine would push it towards the wall, which would be right there, and then it would measure how much the force was. And another thing actually with our design is we actually plan to go with an electric log splitter, so it's safer to actually have inside instead of having to take it outside to actually test it if you're in the right area, because you don't want all the fumes and stuff from the gas being in the building or the warehouse, wherever this test is taking place. 
Um, do you guys have any questions? It's got a lot of application to other things like the business aspect, the understanding other people, the communication. It's just a lot of fun to understand all the things that come into engineering. Absolutely. Our, uh, I mean, our class is called Introduction to Engineering to De Design. So the whole idea is that these students get some kind of problem to address uh, and then go about solving it using engineering methods and practices. Uh, so for this, I mean, the course itself, that's what we do. Um, most of the projects in there are designed around wor real world activities, you know, mimicked a little bit in class. This was an opportunity to take that one step further and actually work with a business, get a real world aspect, get a real world problem that these kids could address uh, in the context of our class. So yes, it definitely enhanced the class. Uh, we found a business that was for sale, uh, went out and found investors and, and an investor and, and went and bought it. Um, so for any of you who are, who are planning on going through the engineering path, um, I'd say it's definitely a worthwhile path. There's a lot of different options for you there. Um, you know, just because you go into engineering doesn't mean you, you have to be an engineer your whole life. Doesn't mean you have to uh, sit in an office and just, you know, do calculations on a, on a computer. Um, so, so anybody who is thinking about engineering, it's an excellent base for anything you might do in, in life, whether you want to go into business or, or sales. There's sales engineering. There's, there's, there's countless number of things you can do with an engineering degree. So, so anybody who's thinking about that path, um, it's definitely worthwhile. Yeah, I, I come from a little bit of a less math, science oriented background. I've been in sales my entire life, but getting a heavy dose of engineering every day. Um, the, the processes are so transferable to everything you do. It's that critical thinking and that step-by-step -step process orienting every situation. This didn't work, what did I do wrong? How can I re-engineer my thought? How can I re-engineer the path I took to get to the wrong type of answer that can lead me to the right type of answer, I think. Um, uh, never being afraid to ask questions. I ask questions every day. I tell people in meetings I'm going to ask dumb questions. I'm going to ask a lot of them. Don't ever be afraid to ask questions, um, and don't don't ever be afraid. I think I think the brainstorming that you guys did that led to that decision matrix is so valuable. That will serve you so well in anything that you decide to do. Don't don't be afraid to ask questions, um, and, and don't be afraid to continue to innovate and come up with ideas. I mean. It didn't exist, there was no invention, so we innovated and came up with something. I mean, that is such a powerful tool, it's such a cool thing uh, to have experienced. Um, I'd hold tight to that, it will serve you very well. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Uh, we just, we're just thankful for Joe Marshall, we're thankful for this opportunity to work with the kids, and, and you know, we hope it's a, it's a relationship that continues in the future.